who am I even fighting for anymore? Like, who am I fighting for? I'm, I did all this to bring these guys more money and more leverage and to protect them and all this and just to preserve and enrich the brand as much as we can. And then they're over here signing penny deals. Moral, morals don't matter in business. Not even. Yeah. And it's not even like a thing. For sure they don't. For sure they don't. For sure they don't. For sure they don't. They don't care. When it comes to business, it's just business. It's not, it's not even personal. Thing to make it matter. Like, people don't care. Like, nah, it's business. This is business. How am I willing to give up more than all y'all with less? It just makes no sense to me. It's like, that should have meant more that someone that had way more is giving up his shit and risking his shit for y'all that have less. That's the point. Today I wanted to address a few things because I went on a podcast with Bradley Martin a couple weeks ago. Just talking about the history of faith, I was breaking things down. Like I even went on um to, on a toasty that was more detailed than I talked about like our old old CEO. I don't even think I brought him up on Bradley Martin's podcast. It's crazy because like I can't believe I never actually spoke on that. I was always told not to because of lawyers. It actually is crazy when people that I've talked to behind the scenes like heard the full story. It's crazy. Like and I'm talking way back in the day and like. At that point, every single one of us was a victim. Like, we really got played by this guy. You know, all of those feelings and all that knowledge of what's been happening has been, like, sitting inside me for so long. And I hope in some ways, hearing all this and knowing all this happened kind of makes you guys understand why I ended up the way I ended up a few years ago. Like, this shit really just killed me. Like, I care more about FaZe than anything. I just want to address a few things about that. You know, why I spoke on Adapt, because in the Tozies, I, I did, like, talk adapt. about it. You know, who really runs FaZe, where things are going to go from here on out, et cetera, et cetera. I want to talk about all these things. But I do want to say I made this video before Tico made his response, and I made my response to him, so it's been sitting for a while. <laughs> so me. since that video went up, obviously a lot has changed because Tico then confirmed everything I've been saying in the last video. A lot of people didn't believe me because they thought I was, you know, on drugs or whatnot, which is so stupid. But I understand. I really do. Maybe people thought I was reaching for something, and I'm glad that Tico finally came out and said his piece, and now people understand, like, I wasn't lying about what I was saying. I wasn't making anything up. I wasn't fabricating anything. But even before Tico made his video, like, we all started coming together, and we started figuring out what we need to That's do to fine. take FaZe back That's to where good, it needs man. to be. Just putting I didn't watch Tico's video yet. Let me know if I should watch that. FaZe people back in control creatively, deciding things. Like, everything you guys see from FaZe. That's how you know, bro. Behind the scenes is like, we only know what people show us, bro. Behind the scenes is really what it was really going on, bro. In front of you, or what the internet is putting out, or what these 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 pot, or what these uh, uh these people are putting out, or what these blogs are putting out, is bare base level stuff, bro. Like what's really going on behind the scenes, bro? You don't know, bro. You really don't know. It should come from Why us. We know that? the brand. What's we really know our on? fans. Like, we real, know what's best not... for FaZe. And nobody, especially Tico, Rug, Alex, any of the OGs, should ever feel like they don't have any type of involvement with phase and what happens with it that's just like why everyone feels the way they do i'm telling you like of course some of it comes down to like money and like shares and whatnot but that's not even the full reason why people are upset it's more the involvement and wanting to feel like they're a part of what happens i ain't gonna lie bid felt like for years phase were like fell off like not as far as like you know like just as far as being in a high and like them being like the top team because at first let's keep it real this it was when what started out was optic and phase now i feel like optic it's kind of like has been holding the torch as far as front of Call of Duty for like a while since like BO2. BO2, around BO2 times, I feel like FaZe had it. Like, I mess with Optic, but like FaZe, even in even in the professional, you feel me, aspect, like FaZe was really just holding it down. But like now, mm. With phase. So Tico, I am so proud of you for coming on and talking. I fucking love you, bro. I love everybody in phase, obviously. I just can't wait till we all come together and truly fix phase. All these things. So first of all, I just why I even went on the podcast. I went on there because I, I like I said, it was killing me inside and I just had to speak my piece. I had to let the world know because I just hated living a lie every single day and people always hitting me up about phase. Like, you know, it's me, banks, apex, and Thomas in a room making decisions. Like it's not how things work obviously a lot of people get that but there's still the masses the people that they like market to they don't get it at all they think it's all for us and everything so i just needed to explain that obviously to me tommy banks and apex like we love the brand more than anything we are going to live and die by this brand like we care so much about it it means everything to us i could never see a world where any of us move on to a different team so in a weird way i know it kind of seems like i was going on to damage phase or do you know bad things to the company or whatnot and honestly i don't care really about the company structure i care about the brand and i've made that very clear several times i care about the brand the community the fans what we do a billion times more than you know corporate structure and people that are trying to make money i don't care i'm sorry i just don't i couldn't how could you expect me i went on there because i needed people to know that it wasn't us running phase but that's finally hopefully been understood by most people that it's not necessarily us that's been putting all these things out it's someone trying to think what would they think and put it out you know what i mean it's not us doing it, it's people thinking what we would do so that's why everything comes off like 
kind of phase, but not really. It has to be a group, man. It has to have like a group effort, all pushing for the same thing, being a part of these decisions and make sure that what's coming out is from these people. What's well, if y'all see me talking, I'm just sitting here looking, bro. I'm trying to digest what he's saying. Pause. Like, <clears throat> I'm trying to make sense of all this. So they would do how they would want it because they know their fans the best, right? I do want to say this too, and it's completely random, but a whole separate part of this podcast started popping off because Adderall and Coke and people were talking about me doing that. And they were saying like, you know, oh, he's for sure on that. And I just want to say, I've actually never tried Coke in my life. I know you might be surprised by that since I live in LA and stuff. I know you guys might think that I'm on something because I speak really fast sometimes, but it's just the way my mind works. I've always been like that. Do you guys not remember who I am? I need to get out oh, yeah, of the toxic funny. relationship. My boss is... Hi, are you here for the meeting? No! I am the rock. What's going on, guys? We're in Sharp Fist. Come to the band top five plays of the week. Power myself gaming once again. Come on, I can still do it, bro. I've always been talking fast. I had 10 seconds to do that intro. So it, it was months ago that I uploaded that podcast, but has my feelings changed on it? No, I genuinely still believe everything I said. Obviously, I never wanted to take it. I mean, actually, I do want to take it public. I always do, because I'm a guy that's about transparency. And I even believe, like, when we do fix things, we still need to be transparent. Transparency is key. People need a brand that they can believe in. They need people that they can believe in and trust and know that they're telling them what's actually happening, not the fabricated PR answer that every Every brand and every company do bro it's lame like people love to see that at least they're telling the truth I know some people don't because they're so afraid of backlash but like damn like I'd rather just own up on like I'd rather have the backlash and like get it off my chest and be honest with people than like hide that forever and be afraid of something coming out like just stand on everything we do we all human we got to normalize that we're human and problems happen and things happen but it's okay because we're all here to learn to you know and what's gonna happen in the public eye so kind of like it's, it's a little bit more like serious i guess so to speak like the the eyes are on you and the repercussions may come with like loss of income and, and other things like other stamps but you know it's so much better to just happen from here on out is phase gonna be saved is phase gonna change are these people gonna finally understand what's going on i hope so bro things hopefully will be changed i don't know why i'm brushing my beard bro. but it just hasn't been the brand that you know i built and love you just came up from chipotle and was like thanking me for talking about all this stuff and he was just like bro i love the old phase i hate everything it turned to and it's like i'm not even here to like hurt phase or talk badly on phase because the brand itself Remember, I love it to death. The community, I love it to death. The logo, love it. I'm gonna say this now. Hopefully this kickstarts it and makes you make your own video. Tommy designed the phase logo. I don't care what anybody says. Ferox made the JPEG. Tommy designed that shit. But Tommy designed it. So I'm so sick of hearing this Ferox stuff. Like, bro, just made the JPEG. He designed it, bro, drew it. He's literally him. Whatever, Tommy, make a video on it. Tell the truth. I know you're too cool of a guy. You don't want to speak on things. Tell the fucking truth. Founders are all locked in. Me, Tommy Banks, and Apex, and we want to do what's best for FaZe moving forward. So we're finally locked right. in. I hope the best things do come out of this, and I hope we yeah, can one day, people. you know, take FaZe back to where it's supposed to be. Because I just want FaZe to be the biggest thing in gaming. I really do, but in a positive way. I don't want it to be on no corporate weird way. Be a brand that you can, like, actually see and trust and respect and believe in. You know what I mean? And inspire you to be like them. Like, right now, there's nothing but FaZe that screams. That's inspiring me. That makes me want to. I ain't gonna lie though. I'm not even gonna lie. This is what he's saying is fire because it's like back then, if you was gaming, like you wanted to be in phase. Like I feel like they inspired you to want to be like a gamer, like a pro gamer, at least in that aspect. Trick shotting, split scoping, and all of that was stuff that wasn't like you feel me, wasn't normalized, and it's like they kind of made it that way. Even on the gaming scene, when it's uh uh, we just was uh uh gunning like you feel me, they would win like tournaments and you know what I'm saying and all that. Like people was rooting for them. So I, I get what he's saying. What it's turned into now, I don't really know because I haven't really kept up with too much of it. But like, oh, right gun is still around. But like, what it's turned to now, I don't really know. To live that life. You're holding on to an old ideology of what phase is, not what it is today. And that's like what's sad. But again, I don't want to speak poorly on it. I love phase of death. Always will. So they, so they like incorporated other corporations, like CEOs and other people that kind of know what they're doing. And they seem like they kind of like, yeah. I don't think they forked over their rights, though. I think they just kind of like maybe went a little bit more to the creative side and the business side kind of going like and they didn't see it effing up phase like till i die real shit oh my god like I'm, I'm so glad i don't have to be hesitant over swearing i love the new youtube ceo bro now you can swear just you can't spam it but you can swear that's amazing i love you youtube so things are looking good you know so we got to be positive got to be optimistic you gotta you gotta stay disciplined you gotta work every day you gotta stay up to date on all this stuff and you know hopefully things work out that's all i'm banking on right now and if it doesn't it is what it is you know we tried our best and as long as we tried i'm happy you know what i mean i'm on no like i told you so vibe with them i don't care i just want things to be okay at phase man that's all i care about but yeah so let's talk about adapt 
firstly, I want to say what I said about him in the video obviously was filmed a month after everything happened with him. This was all filmed in January. It's been a couple months since. I haven't talked to him, you know, since everything happened. But everyone at FaZe has been trying really hard to get me and him to talk again because I understand the importance of our relationship for FaZe and for the greater good of everything. So everything you heard me say about him was months ago. I haven't said anything about him recently except for, you know, in the Tico video, that slight comment at the end. But obviously I was trolling, but I still do feel some type of way. Obviously, I am willing to squash it for the greater good of everything, but I just want him to understand why things happened the way they were. I know I definitely said some things, by the way. I'm not going to act like I'm fully innocent. I oh, definitely like blew his phone up talking crazy. I was on some Black Air Force energy, but I was mad and I felt like I was rightfully so to be mad. But I just want to say this to you right now, bro. I apologize for the things I said that were like hateful and this angry and stuff like that. But I, you know, was going through a lot at the time. I felt like everyone was against me. And that's why I was hurt about everything because I felt like, especially you, bro, you should have understood why I was doing what I was doing and I was doing it for everyone and not myself. I was super vocal with you and clear about my intentions with everything. I hate that shit had to turn into what it turned into. And I don't think oh, that's talking too crazy? late to fix things. I don't think that it's too late for us to both understand each other and see where we're both coming from and you know now, yeah these was the top two you feel me back in the back in the cheese this was top two dogs dang they, they was beefing i mean it happens you're gonna beef with your dog it is unfortunate when y'all as big as like uh, pause when y'all niggas like as influential as y'all are like y'all like when y'all was in the forefront of y'all like beefing like and it's on the internet and people see it and you know what i'm saying they pull it back up that's bad that's that a pass it was smoke it. we're both oh, grown man. bro we're not 14 15 anymore and i know yeah, you know grown. that so obviously i'm always willing to do what's better for everybody else i just want to be heard and i want to be understood as well that's it bro i apologize once again for all the crazy things i said you know i'm just kind of crazy sometimes but yeah that's it thank you so much for watching please leave a like if you guys did enjoy i want to know what my son said he got crazy yo rain was northern was talking hot what my son adapt say nah, nah 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 i might do, yeah we're going we're going we're going to do a follow we're going to do a follow what's going what's, what's going on you heard he was talking hot. He was getting wacky. What's, what's the word? Nah, I hope this junk work out, though, man. Shout out to FaZe. They probably, they, I ain't gonna lie, they one of the reasons why I even do gaming and do YouTube and streaming to a degree. Hey, man. Even though I wish they would have had somebody black in, back, back in the cheese, back in, you feel me? Back on the team. See somebody like that, rep, your representation is very important. You see somebody that look like you doing something that you think you want to do or doing something that you want to do, or even if it's harsh to mind or whatever the case may be, Hey man, you will you will then be like, well maybe I could do it. Like some people may they don't need that. Maybe they they make themselves that person, and that's cool too. But, but it's a little backstory.